uh, Pierre May, uh, Pillet. Um, uh, so it's, uh, you know, mercy ships, mercy hospital ships, but you're a HIV advocate, you're a <laughs> former WHO uh, representative, uh, you're the fourth, so that's either great position or horrible position. Uh, your perspective on what you've heard so far. Uh, merci, uh, sorry. Thank no, you very okay. much, uh, Brian. I wish to, uh, first of all, uh, recognize that the Africa continent, uh, over the 20 uh, years, the past 20 years, has made uh, significant progress in improving the health of the people. Uh, despite, of course, the disparities between the regions, uh, disparities between the uh, countries, and also within the countries. Uh, the Africa continent carries 25% of the global burden of disease, uh, home of almost 20% of the world's population, and only 2% of the world's doctors. So many challenges, but there is hope somewhere. Um, in some countries, like uh, Cabo Verde in West Africa, uh, Rwanda in Central Africa, uh, Botswana in the uh, southern part of Africa, and Ethiopia in East Africa. And I would like to uh, highlight what happened in Ethiopia because it's a true success story in health sector strengthening mm. because of the political leadership and commitment uh, for change, change for health, leadership for action. And uh, Ethiopia over the past 20 years has made impressive progress in improving the health of the Ethiopian people. Uh, Ethiopia just in 2015 concluded uh, health sector development programs from 1997 to 20, 000, uh, 2015, composed of four series of five years. And uh, this amazing work, because Ethiopia achieved almost all related Millennium Development Goals in 2015. Mm -hmm. And uh, this health sector development program was based on the a very bold uh, strategy, the health extension program, uh, putting for 5,000 people a health post managed by two nurses, all women. So in a country where you have 100 million people, it's about 18,000 health posts. That is amazing. And uh, of course- All the way down to the local level. To a local. And they do promotion, health promotion, uh, prevention, and they use the uh, uh, new technologies, the smartphone, because of a, a national uh, phone uh, uh, coverage network is uh, used to monitor. They, are they networked through digital yes. technology, the yes, 18,000? Yes. Yep. To monitor the pregnancy, to monitor the child immunization. Mm -hmm. So it's about promotion, it's about prevention, it's about care. Uh, you can do the HIV testing, the health post. Mm -hmm. You can monitor the TV. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is, you know, uh, uh, a package of key essential health services at low level. And at least two nurses in yes, each post. Yes, two nurses are two women. Mm -hmm. That is very important to see the place of the women mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, uh, a change happening in Ethiopia. And within the community, you also have it depends on the largest of the uh, Wereda, what they call the village. Mm -hmm. So that is 25 to 45 women leaders 
within the community, uh, so-called uh, Women Development Army. Mm. I was telling the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, or oh, you have maybe the most powerful army in, the, in, the, in Africa. And he said, ah, no. I said, yes, but it's not about the militaries. It's about the women de uh, development army embedded in the community, uh, being the, you know, the link between the two nurses and the community. So let me ask you a question about that and then ask everybody to come in on this, on this question. So you've all talked about infrastructure at some, at some level, whether it's human infrastructure or technology or you know, uh, resources, natural resources. What has, what's the infrastructure requirements that you've seen in going to grounds you know, versus being centralized at the top of going to ground? And I wonder if, as all four of you would think about, does the infrastructure have to be thought about nationally only? I mean, should we be thinking about these approaches regionally uh, and even regionally outside of Africa. So, Robert, do you think about um, um, an axis from Paris to African countries and, that are focused on patients that then have to have infrastructure all along? How, how do you think about infrastructure in this case and how, as you think about scaling innovation, how should we think about organizing infrastructure going forward. Why does it only have to be national, or should it be beyond that? Of, of course, maybe Robert will say more but, on, no. but I don't think that the infrastructure or health facilities must make a difference. Mm. Of course, we need at all levels, at all low level, at district level, at regional level, and at national level. But I don't think, it's the people, the human, resources are key to make a difference, right. to improve the health of the people. You can have a beautiful hospital, what we call in French, Elephant Blanc, big with everything. But if you don't have the right, the right person, the right doctor, the right nurse, the, the right midwife, so at the training, right, training for at you the right it? place, <coughs> the, the health of the people will not be improved. Yeah. That is my understanding of the, the you know, the, what we should do in Africa, making sure that we have the people to do the job. 